Morning. Uh, it's a sunny day here in Spain. But I want to talk about YouTube. Um, the, the thing is, I do think there's a lot of people on the expat community that can offer a lot more than just talking about the expat community. Um, I'll give you an example. Apology for wrestling. This little box of tricks here. Um, I'm going to be getting the Raspberry Pi out and doing a load of stuff on how to control motors and things with it. Um, because I think it's a useful thing. But also for my own interest, I'm interested in automation. I'm also interested in remote monitoring because even within the facilities management, remote monitoring is one of those things that can often be quite expensive. And even if you bought a Raspberry Pi for every single um, piece of air conditioning or whatever, it would actually still be viable because a Raspberry Pi is about, what, $5, I think, the cheap one? Well, I know some of the modules for the remote monitoring cost about £200 a piece, and they're not much better, they're not, yeah, in all honesty. I think they're overpriced, but that's a monopoly at the end of the day. Um, but the point being is there's a lot of stuff that we all have. There's a lot of stuff that we can do. Um, I mean, one of the things, I'll, I'll give you a, a few ideas just off my list so that you can sort of think, well, maybe I can do this. Learning Spanish, you know, at the end of the day, one of the problems you face if you already know Spanish is you already know it. Where I can actually do a video channel basically learning Spanish and go over the, the issues that I face relating to the sounds, uh, but also the confusion on some of the words and things from the point of somebody learning Spanish. That could be an entire channel on its own. Teaching English can be another one of teaching people how to speak English, because obviously I've, I've got my uh, TESOL certificate now, but also I do think there's more to it than the courses, because there's a lot of English teaching out there that isn't so structured. Because, I mean, it's like when you learned English as a child, you didn't get into the whole definition of the English language and the breakdown of the types of phrases and idioms and all this sort of stuff. You didn't do that when you were learning English. Same with Spanish. I don't care. I don't care what an idiomism is or anything else. I just need to speak Spanish. And that's why I think there's, there's a market for teaching English. Um, and I know there's a market. And you're probably going to go, hang on a minute. Right, so I'm just writing these down for myself as well. And I said, like I said, Raspberry Pi. And then number four, computer gaming. I don't really game that much. Um, I didn't game for years because I, I, I'll be honest, years ago, um, I used to go to all the LAN tournaments, you know, where everyone used to go and hook up their computers and we would play Counter-Strike and America's Army was a new thing and um, Medieval Total War and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then I realized I was wasting so much time doing that that I stopped and moved predominantly onto developing my computer skills in Excel and Microsoft products, which developed um, to the point of what I do now. You know, at the end of the day, I moved away from the gaming. So, but I would say in YouTube, the gaming community is probably the one of the most supported in, in YouTube, but also it's where a lot of views come from. So you could get into the gaming if you're not already. And I'd like to discuss that. If any expats are already in the gaming side, um, let's have a chat because let me know what you're doing and how you're finding it. Is your channel growing? What you know, We can have a conversation around that. Another one you could do is mechanics. You know, If you're from a mechanical background in the Philippines, for example, vehicles always break down because most of them are old. They're poorly maintained so even going through things like that there's a market for it because if you do stuff like say on a multi-cab how many multi-cabs are there in the philippines ridiculous it's so actually doing a maintenance servicing replacement all that sort of stuff on multi-cabs i'm sure you would get a good following and then obviously i've got here i've got drones um because obviously getting into the drone stuff at the minute so that's going to be another separate entity once I get my new motors. I've got to order those, yeah, coming from all the way from Australia to Spain. Um, 
But those are just an example of five, just, well, six channels that have got nothing to do with the Philippines whatsoever. And I just wanted to put that out there, the fact that's just off the top of my head. That's not even getting into things like uh, Excel, because I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good with Excel. Um, things around LinkedIn, things around other business type of stuff um, that could all be separate channels. And in all honesty, some of these make a lot more money because they're based on business communities. They're based on specifics that often have people buying tutorials, et cetera, et cetera, which means the AdSense revenue is often much higher. IT can have a higher revenue than the Philippines expat community. I can guarantee that. Um, so bear that in mind. You don't have to do it on the Philippines. Now, the other side of this, which is the bit that nobody really sort of talks about too much, is the consulting stuff and the referrals and the work that comes off the back of it. Um, I get a lot of people contact me about stuff related to Spain, the Philippines, immigration, uh, contract work. And a lot of it is because of the YouTube stuff where people are seeing me on a regular basis and they need some sort of assistance and know they can contact me directly. They know, they, they sort of visualize me as if we're talking, you know, because obviously I'm just talking to a screen, but the visualization is I'm talking to you. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that goes off on the back of it. Like I was saying, if you're doing learning Spanish and you get to a point where the fluency is very, very good, somebody may go, can you teach me Spanish as well? The English teacher. Can I have private tuition? Can I have group tuition? That happens. There's a lot of reasons there's people doing this in YouTube is because there's a lot of work off the back of it. Um, the Raspberry Pi, there could be stuff where people will say, can you develop me this? Can you teach me how to program in Python? Can you teach me this? There is a lot of stuff that people simply do not cover in YouTube that they could be doing. Photography is another good one. Because obviously people spend a lot of money on photography. But you get a good positive following from people in photography. Um, the drone guys, I mean, I've recently got involved with uh, expat uh, uh, Mazaron, which is a bit further south from me. It's about an hour or two away. They do drones. They, you know, they fly drones. They go over historical sites and all this sort of stuff. Nice stuff. I'll put a link to his channel here. Um, but also... The community is a very, very positive one. I've not heard one negative comment within the uh, drone community. Everyone's very upbeat and very positive. And that's another reason I would say it's worth looking at other things as well. Because in those different remits, you'll find different niches where people can have a different mindset. Because uh, I know the Philippines has got a lot of positive people, but it's, it's certainly got some of its uh, wild cards in there. Um, where some of these channels don't have it. They, they just don't have it because, the you know, like if you're learning a language or whatever, the only people that are going to grumble about you learning a language is normally people that are already fluent in that language, but often aren't fluent in the language you're already speaking. <laughs> um, but you don't really get it too much. And I think that, you know, if somebody's looking for something positive, because I know if you're, if you're doing the vlogging stuff and think, shall I do vlogging, shall I do it? Getting in the Philippine stuff, you see the tit tat arguing and that sort of thing. Maybe focus on something else that you already do. What about writing? I mean, I know writing sounds so well. How do you do vlogging on writing? Well, the whole point of talking about it and how you get ideas and how you develop your system for writing is something people would be interested in learning about. But in the same way, how do you do blogs? How do you do whatever it is that you have a skill for. And this is why I wanted to sort of put this video out there and say not everything starts and ends with just doing the Philippines vlogging. You guys have got a lot of skills out there. You've got a, a, a whole history of stuff you've done. Um, you've, you've spanned your career length before you even come to the Philippines. You've got a lot of knowledge to give and share to other people. Do it. Thanks for watching.